Hello everyone, in this set of lectures we are going to look at some short-term decisions that business managers have to make and how the accounting process can assist them in making an informed decision. What thing would you be looking for if you're looking to make a decision? Well, it depends on what the goals of your business are. Sometimes you want to increase your profitability, sometimes you want to increase your market share. Whatever goal you are looking for, however, you're going to have a ton of different alternatives which you can choose from to make that goal happen. But companies only have so much limited resource. So they need to pick the group of alternative decisions that's going to help maximize their objective. As a rule of thumb, though it's not an absolute, the easiest way to figure out should we do this or should we not do this, what's the best of the different alternatives that we have, is to look at your company's contribution margin, what's left over from your revenues after you account for all of your variable costs of production and operations. The options that give you the highest contribution margin will ultimately lead you towards fulfilling your goals, to increasing your target profits, to increasing your market share, etc. So set up all of your different alternatives, go through each one and figure out how is this going to affect our revenues, how is this going to affect our costs, ultimately how is this going to affect our contribution margin, and then, in money terms, pick from those alternatives what's the best mix to overall increase your company's profitability. To do this, you need to decipher what's relevant information and what's not relevant information. There's a lot of things that go on within the operations of a company, and a lot of those things are completely irrelevant to a decision. Take rent of your production facility, for example you have the option to make a ton of different products, but no matter what products that you make within that one facility, you're gonna pay the same amount of rent. The rent, that cost, is irrelevant because it does not change between your different decision alternatives. So what is relevant information is future data that is unique to each decision that you make. Your relevant costs are costs that are only going to be incurred if you make that decision. Your revenues are going to be revenues that are only going to be realized if you make that particular decision. If it's a cost that is shared amongst a bunch of all, all of your different decision options, then it's irrelevant because it doesn't, it's not going to change the profitability of a company. There's no reason to put that rent in your calculations if you have to put it in for each and every different decision alternative. For revenues, your baseline revenues, things that come from other sources of revenue that aren't going to be affected by the decision you're trying to make are irrelevant. Uh, you're going to realize those revenues as well, no matter what decision that you pick. So throwing them into your calculations is just causing you to work with more information than you need to. Your relevant revenues are revenues, like I said before, that are only going to be realized from a particular decision. <laughs> There is one type of irrelevant cost, uh, a term that gets used a lot, and it's very important, and it is called a sunk cost. And a sunk cost is costs from the past that are incurred that cannot be changed. No matter what decision you make, you still incurred that cost. And it is a fallacy that a lot of companies and private parties make when they're making money management decisions. Um, I live off the shores of Oneida Lake, a bunch of people I know own boats. Something breaks down on the boat, it's ridiculously expensive to fix, but they still do it. And their thought process is, well, I already put this much money into that boat, so I'm going to factor that in my decision, how much money I already have tied up in it. And they shouldn't, uh, because it's irrelevant. You've already paid it. It's a sunk cost. The only cost that matters, should I put more money into fixing my old boat or should I put that money as a down payment to a new boat? Uh, so a lot of people get tied to what happened to them in the past and it causes them to make decisions that don't maximize their objectives, don't provide the most utility for the amount of money they have, don't maximize their profits, etc. I'm talking about profits, I'm talking about money over and over and over again because it's an accounting class and we deal with numbers, but life isn't numbers. There's a lot of things that go on in life that you can't quantify in numbers. They're qualitative variables, if you will. People aren't just money. There's decisions you can make that yes, it will increase your profitability, but is it the best overall decision for your company, the public's perception of your company and your employees? 
you could probably save some money by outsourcing production of a particular component that you need for the manufacturing of one of your products. And it would come to you cheaper than making it internally. And that would allow you to, you know, increase your profitability. But now that you don't have your own employees stateside, if you will, making your product anymore, you'd have to close a plant. You'd have to lay off employees. Well, how are your other employees that are still there going to feel when they just saw a third of your company's workforce get laid off? They're going to think that their job is not safe and they're going to start looking for other opportunities. And you might end up losing some of your better employees, not for any particular reason for their performance, but because they think it's better for their long-term financial outlook to find a more secure job. Yours has become insecure because you laid off people because you wanted to increase your profitability. So you could be hurting the efficiency of your workforce by outsourcing production to save money. Outsourcing production also has the effect that you lose control over your goods. Somebody else is making those parts for you. You don't have production managers, et cetera, overseeing it every day. You just get those goods when the shipment comes in. I tell the same story always in this class. Uh, of, uh, that's a perfect example of how you lose QC quality control by outsourcing production. They came from <laughs> one of my friends who used to be a consultant for small businesses. And one of the small businesses that he consulted for made bathroom fixtures. And one of those was showers uh, you know, th that you see in apartments with a sliding glass door. Well, those sliding glass doors have little ball bearings on the bottom that make them slide. They were going to a local fabricator to have those ball bearings made for them. It was very expensive. They decided they were going to outsource production to another part of the world for those ball bearings to make their glass doors slide. And the first shipment came in, and it was perfectly fine. The second shipment came in, and a large portion of all the ball bearings that came in didn't roll. They stuck. Uh, they had a whole bunch of ball bearings that they could not use. And they went to the person that was the outsourced manufacturing to and said, oh, the, you know, this isn't right. And they're like, we'll fix it. Thankfully, enough of them worked that they could keep up with their production quotas, the amount they had to make to keep, you know, their product on shelves. Next couple batches came in. They were fine. And then somewhere down the line, fifth or sixth batch they got, it wasn't just a small portion of, the, of those ball bearings that did not roll. It was all of them that came in. And it completely shut down the company's ability to make any kind of sliding door because they didn't have this one little tiny part. It cost them a ton of money because they had no way to make revenue against all those costs that they incurred. They gave up quality control to hopefully increase their contribution margin, but in the long run, it hurt profitability. So being able to oversee your own manufacturing uh, is you know definitely something that's going to help you assure that you have inventory flow that's going to meet customer demand. And then lastly, you're going to have a lot of pricing decisions. And you're probably going to sell to a lot of people. And there's going to be companies that you really want to sell to because they're big box retail stores that will try to, I don't want to say undercut you, we'll try to get the best deal possible for them. And they'll say, all right, we want to put your product on our shelves, but we don't want to pay the full asking price that you have. Would you sell it to us for 90% of that? And the company would probably still be profitable if they did sell it. The problem with that, in this case, is that they probably have other customers. And if they ever found out, those other, those other customers ever found out that they were selling to big box retail at 90% of their normal selling price, those other customers would be like, Psh, we want your goods for 90% of what we're paying right now. And all of a sudden now, all of your revenues are going to decline or you're going to lose those customers because you're going to be upset because you give somebody else a better deal.